వెల్కమ్ టు స్వామి వివేకానంద యోగ అనుసంధాన సంస్థాన్ ఎస్ వ్యాస డీమ్డ్ యూనివర్సిటీ వెల్కమ్ టు ప్రశాంతి కుటీరం ద రెసిడెన్షియల్ క్యాంపస్ ఆఫ్ స్వామి వివేకానంద యోగ అనుసంధాన సంస్థాన్ అండ్ టుడే సెషన్ ఈజ్ ఆన్ ప్రాణాయామ ది ఆర్ట్ అండ్ సైన్స్ ఆఫ్ బ్రెత్ లైఫ్ బ్రెత్ ద ప్రాణ gaining control and mastery over the prana we start with a prayer from prashna upanishad pranasya dam varshe sarvam tridive yat pratishthitam mate va putran rakshasva shrischa pragnan cha vidhe hinayiti prana is the basic fabric of the whole creation and we pray to mother prana oh mother please protect us like the mother protects children to bring in us the real wealth the knowledge and the wisdom and continuous growth towards perfection and that is the beautiful prayer which ends the essence of prana so what is prana what is its concept modern society has made great contributions science has continuously grown to understand more and more about the physical world fortunately today we know the entire structure of this energy the atoms have the protons and the nucleons the electrons and what are they made out of they are all made out of quarks energy we also understood the laws that govern them newton's laws of motion and quantum mechanics we understood everything about the physical world now we move to understand things which are beyond science is in a turning points at fritz of capra and we are moving to understand the subtle dimensions of our universe according to the modern science what is prana what is life thing essentially it is functioning of the dna and rna molecules the genes cells are the units of life and the difference between a dead cell and a living cell is what is called as prana and that prana is nothing but functioning of the dna or any molecules you know what characterizes life is motion reproduction and say that in trying to understand this from modern biology we put according to science classical mechanics Prigozhin proposed the non-linear model and Fritz of Capra gave a dimension to this and Professor Amit Goswami brought out the beautiful book on self-aware universe enunciating the quantum laws, laws of quantum physics. the key criteria for living systems in its broadest sense has three aspects one the pattern of organization the second the structure and third the life process what is the pattern of organization that we talk about it is a configuration of relationships that determines the system's essential characteristics and the physical embodiment of the system's pattern of organization is what you call as the structure for example the serpent has its own shape birds and the tiger and the human beings we all have a physical embodiment and the life process is nothing but the activity involved in the continual embodiment of the system's pattern of organization this is how 
Fritz of Capra writes about the key criteria of living systems in his accomplished book, The Web of Life. So what characterizes this process of life is cognition. There is a pattern, there is a structure, there is a process. And there is a continual interaction of all the three things. And this continual interaction of the pattern, structure and process is what is known as life processes. And this life process is featured by cognition, that is knowing. We normally thought that it is only in the brain that cognition takes place. But the learning, the, all these things no doubt happen at the mind level, at the cognition level, at the brain level. But it is there in every cell. It is there in every nervous system, immune system, endocrine system, and all systems. And single cognitive network that goes on. Cognition is therefore just limited to brain, but extends to the whole of the physical body. Each and every cell shows the cognition inherently present. Mind and matter, therefore, are merely different dimensions of the same phenomenon of life or prana. So from this definition viewpoint, we can say that earth has life. This is called as Gaia phenomena. In the Greek, they always believe that earth has life. You know. How can we say this according to the new definition? Because earth is dynamic having continuous interactions. It has a structure, it has a pattern of organization and because of that we can say earth has life. In India, we always believed that this earth is not inert but it is having prana, it is having consciousness and therefore we called as Mother Earth and we worship her in her divine manifestation. And this is the basis of our scriptures that we have. From this prana is the basic fabric of the whole creation. Everything is made out of prana, prana, prana. Just like we say in modern science that every object that we have is made out of energy. Precisely you can calculate how much of energy is in given matter. But according to yoga, according to the Upanishads, it is said that it is the prana that is the basic fabric of this whole creation. And there is the prana there is the mind and the life in the body. Prana is the field of consciousness. Prana, just like energy, has the existence at the long level. So I try to compare the energy versus prana. Look at this electromagnetic spectrum. We all are aware of the light spectrum and what you plot here, the frequency and the amplitude, wave length. So, Vibhgaya, violet, indigo, green, blue, green, yellow, orange, red. When you come to the higher frequency from violet, you go to ultraviolet, then you go to X-rays, then you go to gamma rays and then you go to into the matter itself. When you go on increasing the frequency, increasing more and more, more and more, it condenses and wavelength becomes very, very small and becomes matter. So essentially it is condensation of that energy. On the other side of the spectrum, look at here, when you have this um, red, when you reduce the frequency, then you go into the infrared region, that is the region of heat. Further coming down, you have the radio waves. In the radio waves, you have the short waves, the 
medium waves and the long waves. A long radio wave can be almost like three miles one wavelength. And when you go further, you have the fields, electromagnetic field. This entire energy, electromagnetic spectrum that we know today. I put forth here a similar model for the prana. Here we have the dimension related to the human beings in the center. And when you go to the regions of higher constriction, you know, then we come into the region of the mineral world that the grossest manifestation is matter. There we have the least of the freedom. You know. Then from there we come to the plant world in which you start seeing the life manifesting. You know. There is growth, there is reproduction. But when you go further into the animal world, there is locomotion take place. And in the transition, there is something very interesting. Once I was visiting a botanical exhibition, I saw the Drosera plants. And just touch that and the Drosera will just fold itself. I have heard that there are some huge plants in the jungles of Africa in which these huge plants having very, very broad and long leaves, very thick. So during the scorching sun of summer, this provides a very wonderful shade and therefore animals are attracted to come. When a small jungle cat or a small animal comes and is resting nicely, sleeping, then this plant that leaves slowly start coming down and down and secretes a sticky fluid on that animal, takes it into its blossom and then eats it up. What is it? Animal eating plants. You know. The dimension of cognition has grown. The manifestation has started coming up so nicely and it has locomotion that has come. And from there we come to the animal world in which we have the next dimension in which we have the animal world. We have not only the growth and reproduction but we have got the movements. As one of the Samsung Shloka says, Ahara, Nidra, Bhaya, Maithuna are the four features of animals. Ahara, they take food. Nidra, they have nice sleep. Bhaya, they are afraid. Fear, fear. And Maithuna, the process of reproduction. These are the common features of all animals. And it's so, the features in our human beings also. But what characterizes the human being is the intelligence. Buddhirhitesham adhiko visheshaka. That is the speciality of the human being, to analyze, discriminate, intelligently understand. So in the transition from the animal world to the human spectrum, we have this type of wonderful intelligence emerging. Our ancestors, the monkeys, show this intelligence. Once we are going on a hike and we had prepared ourselves, we had nice breakfast in the morning and we know the hike was long, we had to cross many mountains and forests and we had to reach that place and we expected it would reach by about one o'clock and then we had arranged for our lunch. But however, our trekking was slower and we were all feeling hungry by about 12, 12, 30 but still we had to go another probably an hour. Then when we were very hungry, then we found a beautiful mango orchard. And it was a ripe season and we are very happy, we will get beautiful mangoes and we can eat. And when we went there, unfortunately all the mangoes have been ransacked by the monkeys. We could not get any mango whatsoever. But we went a little further, there was a nice orange orchard with beautiful oranges hanging out of them. 
And then we got surprised. How is it that the monkeys have not ransacked these oranges? Then a person going passerby, he said, Sir, monkeys used to come here, pluck the orange, and they try to peel that the bitter juice goes into their eyes and immediately they throw it and then go away. This is how our orange orchards have been completely protected for all these years. But now, sir, something different happened. Recently, a nice monkey, it came and it looked at this thing orange, took the orange to the back and started peeling and they started eating. Now we are in for trouble. You know? This is what you call as intelligence. You know? So in the transition period, the prana manifests in the form of this intelligence, the creativity. And this is what features human beings. In the human spectrum, we have got people belonging to the category of three gunas, the tamasic, the rajasic and the sattvic. People who are less developed, well developed and highly developed personalities we see in the human beings and there the intelligence goes on increasing more and more, more and more. And beyond the human spectrum, where the superhuman heights. You know, and this is what Yoga Shastra, the Patanal Yoga Sutra talk about in which we start gaining higher and higher freedom, higher and higher manifestation, supernatural powers, extrasensory perceptions, the various siddhis, all these things start coming up with the higher and higher power. And finally, when the prana goes into that highest expansion, it merges with the totality. And that is the comparison between the pranic spectrum and the energy spectrum that we have. Therefore, we can say that prana in its original state is self, is brahman, is pure consciousness. It has infinite knowledge, infinite power, infinite bliss and has the highest freedom. And as the prana constricts, its intelligence, its creative thing goes on reducing. So what is the difference between prana and energy therefore? Prana has intelligence, that is the cognition, while the energy has the least of it. Almost say that energy doesn't have intelligence at all, we can say. So therefore, we can say one end of the spectrum of prana is energy. So we can say that prana in its grossest manifest is energy. So then, what is pranayama? Pranasya ayamaha pranayamaha, it is said. That means, gaining mastery over the prana is pranayama. And when we start getting control and mastery over the prana, we raise ourselves from our animalistic instinctive level to become normal human beings with nice discrimination power. Become great human beings using all that discrimination power for the good of the society, good of people. Then we go to the higher levels of superhuman heights and then we become divine human beings and reach that perfection itself. This is the definition of pranayama in its broadest sense. Prana has five dimensions as has been postulated and mentioned in the Upanishads. And here we see the sketch of the physical body and the pranic body. The pranic body is called the pranamaya kosha. And this covers the whole of the human physical body. And when you superimpose, the pranamaya kosha is slightly bigger than the physical body. Therefore, you can see this pranamaya kosha as the aura. There be half an inch or two centimeters bigger than the human body. And there are five dimensions of prana and that's called prana, samana, vyana, udana and apana. Prana is the one that is governing all the functions in the body in the upper regions. 
you can see here prana in the head region it is all prana and the bottom we have the apana apanam pratyagasyati it is said it is the apana that controls urination excretion sexual discharge peristaltic process while the prana which controls the functions in the higher things about the thinking about seeing about breathing about smiling about the hearing all these things are governed by the prana so most important then samana is the one that controls the digestion in between prana and apana and then we have the vyana the vyana is the one that brings the sense of touch the sense of touch is governed by vyana and finally the udana udana is responsible for vomiting belching antiperistaltic process and its subtle form it is called the kundalini shakti and these are the five manifestations of prana just like we have electricity it's manifested in form of light in the form of magnetic effect in the form of heating effect similarly the prana has this five functional manifestations they govern all the functions in the physical body according to that and pranamaya kosha is made out of more than number of nadis nadis are channels of prana just like we have the nerves blood vessels in the physical body we have the nadis and how many nadis it is said that there are 72 lakh nadis 7.2 million nadis as mentioned in the prashna upanishad tasam shatam shatam ekasya ha dva saptate dva saptate pratishaakha nadi sahasrani bhavantya suvyanas charati as defined in the prashna upanishad it is 7.2 million nadis there is 72 into 1000 into 100 but as in the hatha yoga pradeepika we see that 72000 probably the prashna upanishad the seers of the upanishads went deeper and found out the further branches of each of these 72000 nadis 100 more tasam shatam shatam ekasya as it is said therefore there are large number of nadis through which the prana flows and that aspect of the prana which moves through all the nadis is called the vyana and there are three main nadis and the first one is the ida which goes spiraling up then the pingala going up circularly and in the center we have the thing called as the sushumna nadi ida nadi is also called as the chandra nadi or the moon nadi surya nadi or the pingala nadi is the other one and normally the surya nadi and chandra nadi are very very important they govern our entire life surya nadi as the name indicates the sun nadi is burning in character it promotes catabolic rate while chandra nadi deals with anabolic rate therefore our entire life has been governed by this catabolic and anabolic rates that is the surya nadi and the chandra nadi prana flowing through them for example in our childhood we find that our anabolic rate is much much higher compared to the catabolic rate therefore cells are getting created more and more more and more than they are destroyed therefore we start growing physically in the adulthood the two things are balanced and when you go to the old age then the reverse happens in which the catabolic trick takes over and we have the anabolic rate you know, much much less come to the catabolic rate and we go into the old age and the death every day billion cells get created in the body a billion cells get destroyed in the body and what governs this processes of creation and destruction is the surya nadi and the chandra nadi and therefore it's very very important and interesting to see how we can utilize this knowledge base for our therapeutic applications for example surya nadi is the one that burns up therefore can we use it for obesity this is what we started experimenting on so there is a special pranayama known as 
సూర్య అనులోమ విలోమ ప్రాణాయామం క్లోజింగ్ ద లెఫ్ట్ నాస్ట్రల్ బ్రీదింగ్ త్రూ ద రైట్ ఇన్ హేర్ త్రూ ద రైట్ ఎగ్జేర్ త్రూ ద రైట్ దట్ ఈస్ వన్ రౌండ్ లైక్ దట్ ఇఫ్ యూ డూ ట్వంటీ సెవెన్ రౌండ్స్ అండ్ ఫోర్ టైమ్స్ అ డే మార్నింగ్ బిఫోర్ బ్రేక్ఫాస్ట్ బిఫోర్ లంచ్ బిఫోర్ ఈవినింగ్ డిన్నర్ బిఫోర్ గోయింగ్ టు స్లీప్ ఇఫ్ యూ డూ దాట్ దెన్ ఇన్ ఎ మంత్ అబౌట్ టూ కేజీస్ ఆఫ్ వెయిట్ ఈస్ గోయింగ్ టు రెడ్యూస్ హౌ డస్ దట్ హ్యాపన్ బికాస్ సూర్య నాడీ ఫ్లో విచ్ ప్రమోట్స్ ద ఈజీ ఫ్లో ఆఫ్ బ్రెత్ త్రూ ద నైట్ రైట్ నాస్టిల్ బర్న్స్ ఆఫ్ ద క్యాలరీస్ అండ్ దర్ ఫోర్ ద వెయిట్ కమ్స్ డౌన్ and we had number of examples hundreds and thousands of people have used the surya and lom lom pranayam they have tested again and again and they have been able to normalize their weight when i was mentioning about this in detroit our friends they said such an easy thing we do so much to deal with our obesity i told them please write down your weight and every day you practice this and let's see what happens when i come back again then we'll see after a few months and when they went five people and people have reduced their weight some people 4 kg somebody 8 kg somebody reduced 14 kg somebody reduced 18 kg in 9 to 10 months and they are getting normalized so this is the wonder of pranayama it is not a brutal process it is a very subtle technique by which you can bring about the transformations similarly a person who is very very thin can increase his weight by the opposite of that chandra anuloma viloma pranayama close the right nostril breathe in through the right left breathe out through the left you know one round and we do 27 rounds four times a day again 108 two kgs of weight is going to increase you know and this is the simple a nice way to control our weight and i think all of us should do this practice this experiment for this thing you know left nostril breathing chandra and lom vilom pranayam it is called simple left nostril breathing and thereby we will be able to normalize our weight so we started doing some research breathing through a particular nostril can influence body functions how can we do this ancient texts have said the modern neurology tells that the right nostril brings about the sympathetic stimulation the left nostril breathing on the other hand will bring about the parasympathetic stimulation therefore when you breathe through the right nostril it is the left the parasympathetic the sympathetic and the left hemisphere is stimulated so left nostril breathing therefore deals with the pattern recognition the visual dimensions while the right nostril breathing deals with the verbal text this is what we have been able to show in our research in one of our studies we wanted to really test whether really burning takes place in surya anuloma pranayama therefore we had the comparison of the surya anulom vilom chandra anulom vilom cav nadi shuddhi balancing pranayam and what we found was something very interesting surya anulom vilom pranayam increased the oxygen consumption by 37% you could see clearly showing that there is going to be an increased burning that takes place in the surya anulom vilom you know therefore pranayama patanjali puts it as the fourth limb of the ashtanga yoga yama niyama asana pranayama pratyahara the five limbs called the bahiranga yoga then dharana dhyana samadhi three antaranga yogas therefore in these eight limbs patanjali puts pranayama as the fourth limb of the asana as he puts it with so what is the definition again go back pranasya ayamaha pranayamaha that means gaining mastery over prana is pranayama no? and prana manifests in various things and essentially we take the breathing aspect no? so how to gain mastery over prana control the breathing when you control the breathing you have the control over the prana 
and thereby you control the mind, which is the thing. So therefore, the definition of pranayama is to gain mastery over the breathing. So you control prana. And we know that mind and prana are essentially like two wings or two faces of the same coin. You control the prana, you gain control over the mind. And you control the mind, then you get control over the prana. And therefore, pranayama brings the chitta vritti nirodha, gaining mastery over the mind. And how does Patanjali define pranayama? Tasmin sati shvasa prachvasa yoho gati vichcheda pranayama ha, he said. That is, on the shvasa and the prachvasa, that is inhalation and exhalation, you, know, you gain mastery. You know, and that is called as the pranayama, the gati, at the speed of breathing which is there, you have to gain control and mastery, regulation of breath, we can say. And this is the essence of the pranayama. Therefore, when you look at the various ways of breathing, we have the kriyas, we have the sectional breathing, then we have the pranayama. What characterizes kriyas is essentially the fast breathing. You know. They are called cleansing techniques, you know. fast breathing. Whereas sectional breathing will normalize our breathing rate. Whereas pranayama will slow down our breathing. These are the three dimensions of breathing that we have. Cleansing is the first step. You know. It is very good. Because it's going to cleanse our respiratory tracts in the fast breathing techniques. And we have Kapalabhati, which has become very, very famous, thanks to Swami Ramdev. And the Kapalabhati is the fast breathing. And normally, you can do with both the nostrils, or you can do that alternate nostrils, or with single nostrils. When you do with both the nostrils, the, both the nostrils get cleaned up. And with the both nostrils. Whereas you can do the alternate nostril kapalabhati. What about the speed? How much is the speed? Initially, gradually build up the speed. 30 per minute, 60 per minute, 70 per minute, and probably 70 to 80 is good enough. But as you proceed, you can go up to 120 strokes per minute you know? and that is the optimum that is the wonderful thing the maximum effect if you increase the breathing further the effectiveness starts coming down and you get a sort of saturation therefore kapalabhati is the one that cleanses our system increases the stimulation and brings about the changes to shatter the tamas within us it makes us active and the brain cells are stimulated, therefore the memory gets improved with the Kapalabhati. These are the wonderful advantages of Kapalabhati Pranayama. From there we now go to the next level called normalizing the breath. What is meant by normalizing the breath? The normal speed of breathing is 15 to 18 breaths per minute. And what happens in the wrong breathing? One is, the speed of breathing increases, that is number one. Number two, the breathing becomes very haphazard. Normally, the breathing should be rhythmic, but it becomes haphazard. Other dimension is the jerky breathing. It comes and jerks, goes. And the other one is shallow breathing. These are the ones which have to be corrected. Therefore, normalizing the breath consists of all these things. To make the breath normal, rhythmic, continuous and full utilization of the lungs. How do we do that? We have what is called sectional breathing. Abdominal breathing, thoracic breathing, clavicular breathing, full yogic breathing. Using these aspects of sectional breathing, you will be able to correct all the wrong aspects of the haphazard breathing. One of the most important thing that 
we do in the abdominal breathing is to correct the breathing. Normally when you breathe in, abdomen should move forward. When the abdomen moves forward, the thing which is there, which is convex, becomes concave. The muscles here. You can see that one here. And look at this sketch. We have got the things here and it will become concave when you do the inhalation it should be. While when you breathe out what should happen? Abdomen should go down and therefore you will be able to see that the muscles will become convex and this is how it throws away the air. But many people have the reverse breathing. When they inhale, abdomen goes inside. When they breathe out, abdomen comes forward. Because of that, the lower lobe of the lungs, you know, do not get the air. And it becomes very shallow breathing. You see here, because of that, the air will not enter into the lower lobe or even the middle lobe. Essentially, they breathe through the upper lobe. Therefore, abdominal breathing helps to breathe and see that all the three lobes of the lungs will come into operation. Thoracic breathing helps to increase our capacity of the chest, the middle lobe gets operated. While the clavicle of breathing helps to expand the upper lobe by the clavicle of breathing. And ultimately what should happen? We should have the full yogic breathing. As you inhale, we have the abdominal breathing, the thoracic breathing and the clavicle of breathing should happen. And when you breathe out, the clavicle of breathing, the thoracic breathing and the abdominal breathing should take place. And this is called the full yogic breathing. And coming to now pranayama. Pranayama is to slow down the breathing. Slowing down from 15 to 18, coming down further, 10 per minute, 5 per minute, 2 per minute, 1 per minute. And then one breath in two minutes, one breath in three minutes, the breathing rate should come down and down and down. Exactly opposite of the Kriyas, in which you have fast breathing. In the Kriyas, you have the fast breathing which increases the metabolic rate, increases the blood pressure, increases the circulation of blood, increases and cleanses the system. It shatters the tamas. But pranayama is the reverse of that, slowing down, reduction in the metabolic rate and calming up the mind and reducing the excessive speed of the mind. And therefore pranayama and kriyas are two different dimensions, one to shatter the tamas, another to control the rajas and take it deeper. And therefore the pranayama should be properly understood by understanding that it is a slowness that is very very important. And if we understand this, then most of the confusions will go away. And now the question is, how do we reduce the breathing? There are two ways of doing it. One is, inhale with a normal speed, hold the breath, then exhale with a normal speed, again hold the breath. This is the Hatha Yoga school of Pranayama. Holding up the breath is called Kumbhaka. When you breathe in and hold, it is called Antarya Kumbhaka, while exhale and hold the breath is Bahish Kumbhaka, Bahya Kumbhaka. Kumbhaka is a must in the Hatha Yoga school. But there is another way of slowing down the breath. Instead of having the same speed of inhalation, oh, slowing down the inhalation. Inhale slowly, slower and slower and slower. The breath turns over and slowly breathe out. Elongate your breathing, inhalation and exhalation. You know. And this system is mentioned by Vasishta in the Yoga Vasishta. You know. So essentially there are two schools of pranayama. You know. And the Hatha Yoga school and the Vasishta school or the Patanjali school, we can say, in a sense. And what is the difference between the two? The goal of both is the same. That means the breath should slow down, slow down, slow down and completely stop. 
the stoppage of breath, your effortless stoppage of breath is called Kevala Kumbhaka. That's the goal of all pranayama. Because when the breath slows down and becomes stopped effortlessly, then the mind also becomes very, very calm and it gets into the highest stage of meditation and takes us to what we call Samadhi. So Kevala Kumbhaka and Samadhi are essentially the associated ones, I would say. Therefore, by pranayama you can get into the samadhi phase if you do that thing. And therefore, there are two schools, the Hatha Yoga school and the Papatandala school. And normally, both the schools ultimately lead to the same goal, that is the Kevala Kumbhaka. Kevala Kumbhaka is effortless stoppage of breath. But the Hatha Yoga school is beset with some dangers. If you don't do it properly, if you do not follow the norms of Kumbhaka, then it could be very hazardous. We have seen many people who do the Kumbhaka wrongly and they get into a lot of problems with the uh, problems in the brain and the mind or they get into problem with the stomach or they get into the problem of the urination, excretion problems and several problems can arise, you know, gastritis acidity, then the constipation, irritable bowel syndrome or neuroticism, all this thing can occur. That's why Swami Shivananda in his book always says that pranayama is very, very powerful. Be very careful. You must have proper guidance. And you see that you perform the things properly, take into consideration all the you know, possible problems that may arise. You know. For that, in the Kumbhaka pranayama, you must always perfect the mudras, the bandhas, essentially, the jalandra bandha, the buddhiyana bandha, and mula bandha. The three bandhas have to be perfected. If you do not perfect and do the kumbhaka pranayama, you are in for danger. Whereas in the second school, there is no danger like this. It is safe to the core. Therefore, we have adopted the Vasistha school of pranayama in all our classes. Probably you know, lakhs of people, thousands and thousands of people have learned pranayama from us, not even a single case of danger. Therefore, when we take it to the society at large, we should have safe things. That's what we do there. Therefore, the dimensions of pranayama is to see that first you correct the breathing, normalize the breathing, then slow down the speed of breath. Then the second dimension is to balance the breath between the two nostrils. You know. And this is the second dimension of that we have. How do we balance? You know, we use the pranayama technique called Nadi Shuddhi. That is balancing of breath between the left and the right nostrils. We do that. That is Chandra Nadi and Surya Nadi should come to a balance. You know. Then we bring about the sensitization. Sensitization in the process of growth. Therefore, we use the Vujjayi Pranayama and through the Vujjayi, we bring about the sensitization. Then, the cooling Pranayamas, which increases our awareness, developing awareness. So, I have the three cooling Pranayamas called Shitari, Sitkari and Sadanta. And expanding the awareness throughout the body by the resonant waves of Brahmari are the ones. Therefore, these are the different pranayama techniques that are used in the pranayama about which we are going to learn in our practical session. Therefore, to summarize, pranayama is the science of gaining mastery over the prana. Prana is the basic fabric of the whole creation. If modern science has found that energy is the basic fabric of the entire physical universe, prana is the basic fabric of the whole creation. Not only the dead matter, but the living systems. You know. The living systems has the pattern of organization, the structure and the process. And when the three things are in a continual operation with a cognition at its base, the consciousness comes and that is called the pranic dimension. And the difference between a dead cell and a living cell is prana. And prana has got five functional manifestations. Prana, 
అపాన సమాన ఉదాన వ్యాన వ్యాన ఈజ్ రెస్పాన్సిబుల్ ఫర్ ద సెన్స్ ఆఫ్ టచ్ ప్రాణ ఈ ద వన్ దట్ గవర్నస్ ఆల్ ఫంక్షన్స్ ఇన్ అవర్ హెడ్ రీజన్ దట్ ఈస్ సీయింగ్ హియరింగ్ స్మెలింగ్ టేస్టింగ్ థింకింగ్ ఆల్ దీస్ థింగ్స్ ఆర్ గవర్నండ్ ఇన్క్లూడింగ్ ఈవెన్ ద బ్రీదింగ్ ప్రాణ గవర్నన్స్ దట్ దట్ ఫర్ ప్రాణ గవర్నన్స్ మోస్ట్ ఆఫ్ ది ఇంపార్టెంట్ ఫంక్షన్స్ ఇన్ అవర్ సిస్టమ్ వెర్ ఎస్ డైజెషన్ ఈజ్ గవర్నండ్ బై ది సమాన అండ్ యూరినేషన్ ఎక్స్క్రేషన్ సెక్షువల్ డిస్చార్జ్ పెరిస్టాలిటిక్ ప్రాసెస్ ఇస్ ఆల్ గవర్నండ్ బై వాట్ వీ నో ఎస్ ది అపాన వ్యాన దిస్ థింగ్ ఫార్ సెన్స్ ఆఫ్ టచ్ and udana is the one that's responsible for all the upward motions anti peristaltic process vomiting belching and others no? these are the five functional manifestations pranayama we say is the one that gain control over the prana of all the five dimensions and breathing is the most important dimensions of prana and therefore control over the breathing is the key essence in pranayama fast breathing relates to krayas and normalizing the breath will correct all wrong aspects and slowing up breath is the essence of pranayama slowing balancing up breath with two nostrils sensitization and expanding the awareness are all the features of pranayama that we have and therefore let us once again pray mother prana the basic fabric of the whole creation to protect us like a mother protects the children ప్రాణస్ేదం వర్షే సర్వేయత్ప్రతిష్ఠిత మాత్రాన్ రక్షస్వ శ్రీశ్చ ప్రజ్ఞాన్ చ విధేహి నయితి యూజింగ్ దట్ దట్ ఇస్ ఆల్ బి హ్యాపీ అండ్ మూ టు వర్స్ బెటర్ అండ్ బెటర్ హెల్త్ సుఖిద్రాణి పశ్యంతో మా కశ్చిద్దుఃఖాగ్భవేత్ ఓం శాంతి శాంతి శాంతి